going on everybody i've got another tool haul for you here today except this one doesn't have anything that came from an estate sale i don't know what's going on but this whole month of august the estate sales have been really slow uh there have been estate sales but none of them have had tools and the ones that did have tools just had nothing good i mean i I've gone through some of these estate sales that have been posted and they'll have 400, 700, 1,000 items and not one single decent tool, not one thing that I've wanted to bid on. So, nevertheless, I went out to my other sources, Facebook Marketplace, Yard Sales, uh, OfferUp, all the uh, other alternatives to the estate sale market to acquire my, to, to get my fix, if you will, to get my fix. And I got a nice tool haul here for you. Some of it's new stuff, some of it's, you know, newer, and of course some of the vintage stuff that we all like. So, here we go. Uh, I'll start with, I don't know if you guys are a big fan of Tractor Supply, but I have become a huge fan of Tractor Supply. Um, their tool selection isn't huge, but uh, they've got a good clearance section, and they've got a lot of good, um, you know, like wire wheels and uh, flap discs and all sorts of things. And every once in a while, you'll find a tool on there that, uh, you know, is a pretty good deal, something, something different, something you don't see every day in Home Depot and whatnot, which is what this is. This is a Pickwick. Made in Canada. See? See the maple leaf there? Made in Canada. Made in Canada tool here. And uh, I don't have any tool, uh, any tools made in Canada. So when I saw this, it kind of... At, at first I thought, Pickwick. What is that, like French-Canadian? Like, je, je suis Pickwick. Yeah, yes, I pick it very quick. But uh, no, of course it means pick the bit quick and you, know, you stick one bit in and then the other bit comes out so you pick pick quickly the bit it's not french canadian but uh the one reason why i wanted to get this was because of this wonderful tiny little like mini multi-bit i don't know what do you call this a stubby i guess there, there's been a handful of occasions where I, I've needed like micro bits and I just don't have them because it's not really a convenient thing to carry around a whole like micro bit set. But this thing is awesome. I mean, it's got, you know, slotted Phillips, uh, all kinds of different bits in there. And of course you can uh, replace them with, um, whatever other bits you might use more, if it's square bits or whatever, uh, you know, whatever the most common micro bit thing is. And then of course they have the full size driver here. And not that I need another multi-bit screwdriver, but this thing's kind of cool. So there it is, you stick the, the one bit in there and then Select it, boom, you know. Uh, I don't think you can necessarily like replace these. I don't know, maybe if you get like the right length bit, you could kind of switch these out for whatever you need, but there's the common sizes in there. There's this tiny little square bit. Oh, I gotta get rid of that. I can't be having no square bit inside here. I took a square bit screw out of a doctor's office wall today he had his height stick measuring stick and some weirdo jammed a big old square bit screw into his wall and i'm like what psychopath puts a square bit anyway i'm off on a tangent so the driver itself the plastic the shaft is made in canada the bits are made in taiwan this set costs 10 bucks you know i'll throw this little mini in my uh service bag because like I said, you never know when you might need the, those micro bits. I was doing a, actually a towel bar a while back, and for some stupid reason, the towel bar uh, Allen 
those little those little Allen bits that go in the bottom of the towel bar horizontal parts. Just it, it was just the tiniest little uh, Allen screw that it, it needed. And I, I did not have that size bit, so I ended up just like snapping off the very tip of my uh, razor blade and using that to to try and screw it in, and it was just brutal. So something like this could come in handy. So pick quick. I got a Canadian tool now. All right, next up, we got the Harbor Freight Icon. Now, I don't know if you guys are huge Icon connoisseurs. I am not, I don't own any Icon stuff. This is the first thing I've ever bought in the Harbor Freight Icon line. And the only reason I bought it was you know, I'm not really trying to buy into a, a Taiwan brand right now. I, I don't own a huge amount of wrenches. I, I don't intend to. I don't use wrenches every day. Um, I'm just not going to buy into a whole bunch of the Icon line. But I saw this, and I was like, huh, a scraper, a long, long shaft scraper. I'm like, I don't I don't have one of these. I, you know, everybody's got those short, little, stubby scrapers with the interchangeable blades but I saw this I think this was like $15 I believe $14 $15 at Harbor Freight I'm like man that's kind of cool and you, you, I got this grip in my hand and man these icon grips they're making a run at snap-on you know snap-on scripts they're, they're similarly shaped so you know that a, a lot of the similarities here you'll see where it's like the try the try side one two three sides uh, you can't really see it here the harbor freight one is thicker but it's got sort of three sides so that it doesn't roll and it gives you that sort of fit in the hand and then little flat spots here so they're they're, they're making a run at at snap on with these grips and I, I gotta tell you this icon grip really feels good so i got this in my hand for a little while and i'm like you know what i'm gonna pick this up so that i can have a long handled scraper for those occasions when you need such a thing. And they give you the uh, extra set of blades inside here. Oh wow, I thought that was plastic. It's a paper container. So, Probably not the highest quality blades. I'll probably end up replacing these with some USA made blades, but just a cool tool. Something I'm sure I'll need at some point. Like I said, the grip's great. 14 bucks, Harbor Freight, can't go wrong. All right, what do you say we jump over to some vintage tools? Or at least, there it goes. Bye bye, Icon, it'll survive. Gotta break it in. Anyway, at least some uh, semi-vintage tools. This is a uh, diamond, Duluth, Minnesota. Dimaloy. This is like a, a more modern version of the, uh, like the railroad wrench. You can see the finish is uh, no extensions. You know what that means. Don't be a knucklehead and put a three-foot pipe on the end of this thing and reef on it. Don't bend it, but still got a great finish on there. I believe I heard that these, they continued making these kinds of wrenches up until fairly recently, maybe, I don't know what, 20, 25 years ago. So you can see this one doesn't have a lot of wear and tear on it. The finish is still in great condition, but just a nice quality diamond USA made tool. Erie Tool Works, Pennsylvania, Erie, Pennsylvania. I got these two tools for 10 bucks off Facebook Marketplace. This is the one that caught my eye. Just that cool, like, curved jaw. Let me see here. This, this comes out here. There we go. So it's got that, that, like, jaw action 
so you could get a pipe in there or whatever and then just crank down on it and it self tightens I don't know this thing just looked really cool so I'll, get, I'll give that a clean up and that'll look real nice hit it with the wire wheel that'll look great all right moving right along again off Facebook marketplace I got some snap-on tools I'm finally getting getting born again in the snap-on world oh man these hammers are so expensive if you get these these snap-on dead blow ball peens off the truck they're, they're like hundred and forty dollars this is the 32 ounce version Uh, they have a 40 ounce version, so there's one that's heavier than this, but I, th these things are like so expensive, 140, I don't know, last time I checked they were in that, in that vicinity. Pry bars, a little more reasonable, but again, like the four piece set is like $240. Too rich for my blood, so I got to get them off Facebook Marketplace used. You know, this thing's, it's got a little wear and tear, it's had a few dings. But I can clean that up and get it right back into like new condition. This is a 24 ounce pry bar. The the modern snap on pry bars with the the thicker handle, there's just no comparison. The other ones, like the 90s versions, the handle is like a, a real hard plastic and it's a lot smaller in the hand. These newer ones, these grips are just, they're really great. And it's got the striking head on it there. So, getting into Snap-on, slowly but surely, as my bank account dwindles. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you pick this thing up, and, and one nice thing about the Snap-on hammer is, uh, these side grips, these black plastic grips, they compress a lot in your hand. So you can really get a good grip even on a, a 32 ounce hammer like this. All right, next up, we got a $30 haul from OfferUp. I got all this for 30 bucks. It doesn't look like much, but as you go through it, you'll see. So we'll start with the power tool here. This is an, an older brushed Milwaukee M12 impact. And the guy was selling it with a battery. And you know, you always gotta be a little bit suspicious with secondhand batteries. So, of course, I brought along one of my batteries when I was buying it. And I popped his battery out and put mine in, gave it a quick test. You know, everything seemed good. You know. But, of course, when I got home and put that guy's battery in, it didn't work. I put it in the charger. It was flashing red and green in the charger, which means it's probably the battery's probably fried. So, you know, that's okay. I mean, for 60 bucks for all this, even if the battery doesn't work, I got a nice new M12 impact that I can throw in my service bag. It's nice and slim, so even with the battery, you know, you pop that into your bag and that'll not take up too much space. So can definitely put that to good use. We also got a Klein Tools voltage tester. Battery's good, fires right up. So that's nice. We got a USA Craftsman. Craftsman 44808. Little 3 eighths ratchet. All the teeth are good. Everything checks out. Nice little ratchet to throw in the bag. Not too big. Doesn't take up too much space.
And then we got this nice pair of channel locks. Channel lock tongue and groove. It's got a nice finish on it. It's like a matte finish, so they won't rust up. Nice beefy, like Cobra style pair. These are great. Got a couple chisels. Baltimore. Baltimore. I don't know much about Baltimore chisels. But they're sharp as can be, so I can tell that they haven't they haven't hit anything yet. You know you can just feel a tip and, and you know that it hasn't even touched. It's a virgin chisel. Then we got some Husky Pro Western Forge screwdrivers. Got a little mini one. I got a number one and a number two Phillips. Those are great. Those old Huskies are pretty decent. The USA made Western Forge. They can go to good use. Standard Milwaukee bit set here with the um, the bit holding driver, this little like plastic thing here. I, you know, I don't know this, you got like, you can like strip electrical wire there, but really this is just a, just a bit holder. So yeah, pair of like electrical needle nose pliers. Gar it says Gardner, what does this say? Gardner Bender. Because it doesn't say USA made, or it doesn't say where it's made, so who knows. But cool little pair of needle nose. On that note, a pair of crescent needle nose. Again, doesn't say where it's made. These ones are spring loaded. So, kind of cool. Reattach you. Stay closed, you. There we go. All right. Uh, channel uh, channel lock side cutters. Very nice. Jaws are nice, nice and sharp. Grips are virtually immaculate. Great shape. Little tiny pair of, uh, not tiny, but smaller pair of Klein wire strippers. Nothing wrong with that. Six inch crescent. Come on, crescent. Why are you making so much noise? All right, so that's that. 30 bucks, not bad. I'll put all these tools to use. Not a thing wrong with that hole. All right, now we got the crown jewel, the good stuff. So there's a vintage tool, I, I guess I shouldn't say vintage tool, but there's a tool store here in town that sells a lot of secondhand tools. You know, they, they buy like large lots of, um, you know, garage cleanouts and things, and then they resell these tools. And it, it's all at a fairly good price. You're not gonna score any amazing deals like you would at like an estate sale, but I got this handful of rat uh, wrenches here. Let me arrange them according to size. Give me just a moment here to arrange these adjustable wrenches and this standard wrench according to according to size. Oops, I just hit my light. Boom! Look at that. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. So, I got all this for, let's see, I got, this is an 18-inch adjustable I got for $30. 36 39 42 I got all this for 45 bucks. All right, let's 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 start on the small end here. So this is a nice Utica six inch adjustable. Jaws in great shape. 
not too much play there. We got a Proto 8 inch. Proto Professional 8 inch. This, um, like surface, um, boy, I don't even know what that is, but it's peeling off. You can see it's peeling off there. So I'm gonna have to take this to the wire wheel and like clean that off, at least the, uh, the smooth finish portion here. I'll have to probably just remove that just so it stops peeling, but nice Proto 8 inch adjustable. Here's a Proto 7 eighths, open and box end, great shape, nothing wrong with that. A little maker's mark, or a little uh, owner's mark there. I can smooth that out. Another Utica, 12 inch. I cleaned this up a little bit and um, I took the file to the top of the of the wheel here and so now there's a little bit of play. So I think I'm gonna take Scout Crafter's advice and put a little bushing. I'll make a little bushing out of like a, uh, a washer or something and put that in there so that there's not so much play. But still very solid, nice 12 inch Utica. And last but not least, going back to Diamond Tools, Dime Alloy, 18 inch. Look at this beast. Look at that. Look at all that metal. I don't have I, I don't have any 18 inches. I've got a 15, but not an 18. Made in the USA. This is what I really like about this wrench. Duluth, Minnesota. Only on an 18 inch do you got enough space to write Diamond Tool and Horseshoe Company Duluth, Minnesota logo. <laughs> it's like a billboard. This is in beautiful condition. I mean, this thing is fantastic. This jaw does not move. <laughs> I mean, there is so much more motion in this 12 inch than there is in this 18 inch. This thing is rock solid. There is no motion in those jaws. It is just solid. You know, where it, whereas here, I mean, granted, I, I took a file to it to kind of clean up some of the, some of the um, sharp edges and to just give it a nice clean surface to go off of, but you can see a lot of, a lot of daylight in there. It's a lot of daylight in that 12 incher. Look at this 18 incher. It's black as night. There's nothing, there's no space. There's no play. And that thing does not move. That is a solid, solid high quality wrench. So very good score. Definitely looking forward to getting back into the estate sales here in uh, the next couple of weeks. Hopefully, as we get into fall, um, people will start, you know, cleaning off their garages, cleaning off their houses. You know, August and September are big moving months where people are moving into new places. So, hopefully, we'll get back into the estate sale front. And uh, but this this is a great haul that we that we have right here for the month of August so far. Uh, just to give you a little preview of what's coming up, I'm gonna do a flap wheel sander review because I was cleaning up this nice big, what kind of wrench is this? Is this a, it's a Walworth wrench. I was cleaning this up the other day with a flap wheel that just made my day. So I'm going to do a flat wheel review because I've got news for you. There's a flat wheel out there that is amazing. I know Diablo makes good stuff. You can get nice quality flat wheels from all sorts of different companies, but I'm going to do a flat wheel test because I, I've got to pass on this quality that I have discovered. So that's going to be in an upcoming video. I'm going to clean up 
these two snap-on tools, get them nice and shiny, and just do a quick little two-minute video to show you what these things look like. Because, you know, when it comes to restoring these tools, a lot of it is just elbow grease. It's just cleaning up the dirt and the grime and the rust. It's not really technical. It's not really difficult. It's just cleaning them up, making them look good. So that's what I got for you. A couple beautiful pieces. Really glad to have some of this stuff. Some of it will go right in my bag and go to work right away. But just goes to show you, seek and ye shall find.